Mr. President, Senators, <clears throat> almost all of us were here on January 6, and we all have our individual experiences, what we felt, what we saw, what we heard. We've seen clips and reports in the media, but I have to tell you, it was not until preparing for this trial that I understood the full scope and learn the information that you're going to see, that I understood the effort to attack our seat of government in order to carry out President Trump's mission to prevent the certification of a presidential election. It was an attack to our republic to our democratic process. My colleagues, Manager Swalwell and I, are going to walk you through the attack onto the on the Capitol that day and the danger that it posed to the Vice President, to the Speaker of the House, to you all as Senators, my colleagues in the House, Capitol Police, and everyone who works in and around this Capitol. As you have heard, President Trump had been telling his supporters and his millions of Twitter followers that Pence had the ability to secure the presidency for Trump, that Mike Pence alone had the power to overturn the election results if he would just do it. But at 12.55 p.m. on January 6, Vice President Pence formally refused the President's demand. He wrote, and I quote, It is my considered judgment that my oath to support and defend the Constitution constrains me from claiming unilateral authority to determine which electoral votes should be counted and which should not. Pence ended his letter with a passage including the words, I will do my duty. Even though the count resulted in the defeat of his party and his own candidacy, Vice President Pence had the courage to stand against the president, tell the American public the truth, and uphold our Constitution. That is patriotism. That patriotism is also what put Vice President in so much danger on January 6 by the mob sent by our President. To the President and the mob he incited, that duty to our Constitution was an all-out betrayal. And the Vice President was the direct target of that rage. At 12.53 p.m., senators, members of Congress, Vice President Pence were in their respective chambers. Outside, rioters, including some linked to the Proud Boys, broke through the outer barricade surrounding the lawn of the Capitol. Twelve minutes later, Vice President Pence began presiding over the joint session of Congress to certify the results of the presidential election. You can see Vice President Pence gaveling in the joint session here. Madam Speaker, members of Congress, 
pursuant to the Constitution and the laws of the United States. The Senate and House of Representatives are meeting in joint session to verify the certificates and count the votes of the electors of the several states for President and Vice President of the United States. While Vice President Pence presided over the joint session, Trump supporters began their assault on our Capitol. Radio communications from the Metropolitan Police Department highlight how during and following President Trump's speech, Trump supporters descended on the Capitol and became increasingly violent. What you are about to hear has not been made public before. Multiple Capitol entries! Multiple Capitol entries! 1318. They 12 to 50 were coming around uh, from the south side. Be advised the speech. I did. Intel, be advised. You got a group of about 50 uh, charging up the hill on the west front, uh, just north of the, of the stairs. Uh, they're approaching the wall now. Uh, they're starting to dismantle the reviewing stand and throwing metal poles at us. Group of 50, give me DSO up here now! DSO! Multiple law enforcement entries! DSO, get up here! Alright, we're 30 seconds out. We need some reinforcements up here now. They're starting to pull the gates down. They're throwing metal poles at us. Cruiser 50, DSO, get up here! Okay, we're here. 12 to 50, we're here. Oh, you just had an explosion go on up here. I know there's fireworks or what, but they're starting to explode explosive. Fireworks material. After attempting to dismantle the outermost perimeter, the rioters did everything in their power to storm past the police and into the Capitol. They coordinated moving metal barricades the police were using to maintain distance. Listen to the yelling of pull them this way as they grabbed the barriers and attacked officers trying to hold the line. At about 1.10 and 1.23 p.m. respectively, Capitol Police sent out the first evacuation alerts of the day, telling people to evacuate the Madison Building and the Cannon Building respectively. Shortly after, at 1.45 p.m., Trump supporters surged past Capitol Police, protecting the Capitol's west steps, the side that is facing the White House. In another radio communication between Metropolitan Police officers, you can hear an officer declare that there is a riot at the Capitol at 1.49 p.m. Cruiser 50, we're going to give riot warnings. This is the outrage here. We're going to give riot warnings. We're going to try and get compliance, but this is now effectively a riot. 13.49 hours, declaring it a riot. The next video, as well as several videos that follow, have a model of the Capitol complex. The video is from the west front of the Capitol on the Senate side, the side facing the White House. Watch the red dot, which moves up the lower steps of the Capitol, indicating the approximate location of the rioters as they surge past the police. while the mob that Donald Trump sent to stop the certification came closer and closer to breaching the Capitol just one floor below where we are now, Vice President Pence 
continued to preside over the session in the Senate chamber above. At about 2.12 p.m., Secret Service quickly and suddenly evacuated Vice President Pence from the Senate floor. Here's the immediate reaction to that evacuation. No audio. They, the they just cut out. It looks like they, they and sometimes the Senate like they just ushered Mike it. Pence out really quickly. Yes, they did. That's exactly what just happened there. And they ushered Mike Pence out. They moved him fast. There was, yeah, I saw the motions too. While the Vice President Pence was being evacuated from the Senate chamber, rioters were at that time breaking into the Capitol. This next video shows their approach and the initial breach of the Capitol complex. Remember to watch the red dot, which broke is being tracking throughout this incident. Now we're going to show you, through security footage that has not been made public before, what that same breach looked like from the inside. Now because this is security footage, there's no sound. Note, as the video begins, we are seeing the inside view as the mob approaches from outside and beats the windows and doors. You can see that the rioter first break the window with the wooden beam that you saw previously, and a lone police officer inside responds and begins to spray the first man who enters but is quickly overwhelmed. I want you to pay attention to the first group of assailants as they break into the building. The second man through the window is wearing full tactical body armor and is carrying a baseball bat. Others are carrying riot shields. Among this group are members of the Proud Boys, some of whom, like Dominic Pizzola, who was recently indicted on federal conspiracy charges, we will discuss later. can watch where they're coming on our model as well. When I first saw this model that was created for this, I thought back to September 11th. I know a lot of you senators were here some of you might have been members on the House side. I was also here on September 11th. I was a staffer at that time. My office was on the west front of the Capitol. I worked in the Capitol, and I was on the House side. This year is 20 years 
since the attacks of September 11th. And almost every day, I remember that 44 Americans gave their lives to stop the plane that was headed to this Capitol building. I thank them every day for saving my life and the life of so many others. Those Americans sacrifice their lives for love of country, honor, duty, all the things that America means. The Capitol stands because of people like that. This Capitol that was conceived by our founding fathers, that was built by slaves, that remains through the sacrifice of service men and women around the world. And when I think of that, and I think of these insurgents, these images incited by our own president of the United States, attacking this Capitol to stop the certification of a presidential election, our democracy, our republic, At the same time that that breach on this Capitol building occurred at approximately 2.13 p.m., just one floor up, while Senator Lankford was speaking on the Senate floor, Senator Grassley, who had taken over for Vice President Pence, called an unscheduled immediate recess of the Senate. A Senate aide approached Senator Lankford and informed him that the Capitol had been breached. Senator Grassley is immediately escorted out of the Senate chamber. We'll pause. Protesters are in the building. Thank you. <laughs> now, while this was going on, Officer Eugene Goodman responded to the initial breach. You all may have seen footage of Officer Goodman previously but there's more to his heroic story. In this security footage, you can see Officer Goodman running to respond to the initial breach. Officer Goodman passes Senator Mitt Romney and directs him to turn around in order to get to safety. On the first floor, just beneath them, the mob had already started to search for the Senate chamber. Officer Goodman made his way down to the first floor where he encountered the same insurrectionists we just saw watch breach the Capitol. In this video, we can see the rioters surge toward Officer Goodman. Recall that the rioters are in red and Officer Goodman in this model is in blue. Watch Officer Goodman who backs up the stairs.
Although they were shouting that they did not have any weapons, we know from the earlier video that that's not true. The second assailant through that breach was the one carrying a metal baseball bat. We know there were other weapons there that day. Did you hear the other shouts? We're here for you. He's one person, we're thousands. And where do they count the votes? They were coming at the urging of Donald Trump to keep Congress, a separate branch of government, from certifying the results of a presidential election. As the rioters reached the top of the stairs, they were within 100 feet of where the vice president was sheltering with his family. And they were just a feet away from one of the doors to this chamber, where many of you remained at that time. I also want to show you a different angle from the security footage of Officer Goodman's acts. This video is on the second floor of the Senate wing of the Capitol. The red dot, as you recall, represents the insurrectionists. The blue dot is Officer Goodman, who led the mob away from the chamber just minutes earlier. On the left-hand side of the video, just inside the hallway, is the door to the Senate chamber. And watch how Officer Goodman provokes the rioters and purposefully draws them away from the door to the Senate chamber and towards the other officers waiting down the hall. The rioter seen carrying a baseball bat in this video is the same one we saw moments ago breaching the window on the first floor. While all of this was going on, Vice President Pence was still in the room near the Senate chamber. It was not until 2.26 that he was evacuated to a secure location. This next security video shows that evacuation. His movements are depicted by the orange dot in our model. The red and blue dots represents the location where the mob and Officer Goodman were, and where Officer Goodman led the mob away from the chamber just moments ago. You can see Vice President Pence and his family quickly move down the stairs. The Vice President turns around briefly as he's headed down. As Pence was being evacuated, rioters started to spread throughout the Capitol. Those inside helped other rioters break in through doors in several locations around this entire building. And the mob was looking for Vice President Pence because of his patriotism, because the Vice President had refused to do what the President demand and overturn the election results. During the assault on the Capitol, Extremists reportedly coordinated online and discussed how they could hunt down the vice president. Journalists in the Capitol reported they heard rioters say they were looking for Pence in order to execute him. Trump's supporters had erected a gallows on the lawn in front of the Capitol building. Another group of rioters chanted, hang Mike Pence, as they stood in the open door of the Capitol building. You can hear the security alarm from the door in the background, and you can hear the mob calling for the death of the Vice President of the United States. This wasn't an isolated area or incident where that was being told, where that was being said. It was going on everywhere. Here's another example of the crowd outside yelling, bring out Pence, bring him out.
after President Trump had primed his followers for months and inflamed the rally goers that morning, it is no wonder that the Vice President of the United States was the target of their wrath after Pence refused to overturn the election results. Listen to this man explain. Well, Congress, the uh, cowards uh, hid in their uh, inside and were emergency uh, escorted away because of fear of the people. Of course, they're cowards, can't face the people, can't do the right thing. Pence lied to us. He's a total treasonous pig, and his name will be mud forever. Now the real battle begins, and it looks like uh, the American people are very pissed. So... Good luck with that. Peace out. Peace out. Several insurrectionists described what they had planned to do if they encountered the vice president or other lawmakers. One of them, Dominic Pizzola, also known as Spaz, is a member of the Proud Boys, as we discuss. Pizzola came to the Capitol on January 6 with deadly intentions. He commandeered a Capitol Police shield, used it to smash a glass window, entered the Capitol, and paved the way for dozens of insurrectionists. As you recall from an earlier video, Pizzola was one of the first wave of rioters to breach the building. On the left, you can see a screenshot from the video of the break-in we showed earlier. And on the right, you can see Pizzola in the mob chase Capitol Police Officer Eugene Goodman through the building. Pizzola is the man in the center of the photo with the gray beard. Pizzola has since been charged with eight federal crimes for his conduct related to January 6. According to an FBI agent's affidavit submitted to the court, the group that was with him during the sack of the Capitol confirmed that they were out to murder, quote, anyone they got their hands on. Here's what the FBI said, and I quote, other members of the group talked about things they had done that day, and they said that anyone they got their hands on, they would have killed, including Nancy Pelosi, and that quote, they would have killed Vice President Mike Pence if given the chance. They were talking about assassinating the Vice President of the United States. During the course of the attack, the vice president never left the Capitol, remained locked down with his family, with his family inside the building. Remember that as you think about these images and the sounds of the attack. The vice president, our second in command, was always at the center of it. Vice President Pence was threatened with death by the president's supporters because he rejected President Trump's demand that he overturn the election. The mob also went after Speaker of the House, who alongside the Vice President was presiding over the joint session of the certification in the House chamber. The chilling evidence shows that on January 6, armed and organized insurrectionists trained their sights on Speaker Pelosi. They sought out the Speaker on the floor and in her office, publicly declared their intent to harm or kill her, ransacked her office, and terrorized her staff. And they did it because Donald Trump sent them on this mission. As the insurrectionists got closer, Capitol Police rushed the Speaker from the House floor at 2.15 p.m., mere minutes after the Capitol was first breached. They recognized immediately that she was in danger. The speaker was not just rushed from the floor. The Capitol Police deemed the threat so dangerous that they evacuated her entirely from the Capitol complex, rushing her to a secure off-site location. The insurrectionist intent to murder the Speaker of the House is well documented in charging documents that are now available. We know from the rioters themselves that if they had found Speaker Pelosi, they would have killed her. 
I have already discussed Proud Boys member Dominic Pozzola, who has since been charged with eight federal crimes for his conduct on January 6. As you will recall, according to the FBI agent's affidavit submitted to the court, the group he attacked the Capitol with confirmed that, quote, anyone they got their hands on, they would have killed, including Nancy Pelosi. William Calhoun, a lawyer from Georgia, also participated in the insurrection that day, and he too has been charged for his actions. This insurrectionist detailed his criminal activity at the Capitol online. Calhoun wrote about his involvement on his own Facebook page. Here's the post. Calhoun stated, quote, and get this, the first of us who got upstairs kicked in Nancy Pelosi's office door and pushed down the halls towards her inner sanctum. The mob howling with rage. Crazy Nancy probably would have been torn into little pieces, but she was nowhere to be seen. Crazy Nancy. That's Trump's nickname for the Speaker of the House. Then he explains that he and his group only abandoned their claim to the Speaker's office when, quote, a SWAT team showed up. He writes, quote, then a SWAT team showed and we retreated back to the rotunda and continued our hostile takeover of the Capitol building. Retreated, hostile takeover. He's using military terms for this attack. The mob continued to look for Speaker Pelosi throughout the time they occupied the Capitol, including invading her offices. Watch now how the mob searches for Speaker Pelosi's office, which is marked in red, and the House chamber itself. Where are you, Nancy? We're looking for you. She's in jail. Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Nancy. Where are you, Nancy? During the siege, the Speaker's staff took cover in her office, hiding in fear for their lives for hours as rioters broke in and ransacked her office. As the rioters were breaking into the Capitol, her staff retreated into an interior room. Eight of them gathered in a conference room. About the same time Capitol Police announced that Capitol had been breached, Speaker Pelosi's staff heeded the call to shelter in place. On our model, you can see the riders in the rotunda in red and the speaker's office again in orange. So this is a security video, so there is no sound. As you can see here, the staff moves from their offices through the halls and then enters a door on the right-hand side. That's the outer door of a conference room, which also has an inner door that they barricaded with furniture. The staff then hid under a conference room table in that inner room. This is the last staffer going in and then barricading themselves inside of the inner office. After just seven minutes of them barricading themselves and the last staffer entering the door on the right, a group of rioters entered the hallway outside. And once inside, the rioters have free reign in the Speaker of the House's offices. In this security video, pay attention to the door that we saw those staffers leading into and going into. One of the riders you can see is throwing his body against the door three times until he breaks open that outer door. Luckily, when faced with the inner door, he moves on. Another rider later tried, unsuccessfully, to break through that inner door. At this point, the mob had already broken into the speaker's formal conference room that is in the back of the hall at the top of the video. I want to play some audio we have of the speaker's staff 
with the riders at the door that day. You can hear the terror in their voice as they describe what's happening to them as they are barricaded in that conference room. Please listen carefully because the staffer is whispering into a phone as he hides from the riders that are outside the door. You can hear the pounding in the background as that staffer is speaking. One of those staffers explained later that they could hear the mob going through her offices, breaking down the door and yelling, where are you, Nancy? The mob also pillaged and vandalized the speaker's office and documented their crimes on social media. They stole objects, desecrated the office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States. As you can see in these photos, rioters broke down a door. They also shattered a mirror. At 2.50 p.m., several rioters, including Richard Big O Barnett, entered Speaker Pelosi's office. The world is all, all now too familiar with the images from these slides. If you look closely, however, at the now infamous pictures of Barnett with his feet on the desk, you might see something that you didn't notice previously. Here's a better look. As this photo highlights, he's carrying a stun gun tucked into his waistband. The FBI identified the device as a 950,000 volt stun gun walking stick. The weapon could have caused serious pain and incapacitated anyone Barnett had used it against. Richard Barnett bragged about his actions. He was proud of the way he desecrated the Speaker of the House's office. He left a note. We will not back down. Here's Barnett in his own words. Office. How'd you get it? I didn't steal it. I bled on it because they were fucking macing me and I couldn't fucking see. And so I figured, well, I'm in her office. I got blood in her office. I'll put a quarter on her desk, even though she ain't fucking worth it. And I left her a note on her desk that says, Nancy Big was here, you bitch. Trump's mob ransacked the Speaker of the House's office. They terrorized her staff. Again, that is a mob that was sent by the President of the United States to stop the certification of an election. The Vice President, the Speaker of the House, the first and second in line to the presidency, were performing their constitutional duties presiding over the election certification, and they were put in danger because President Trump put his own desires, his own need for power over his duty to the Constitution and our democratic process. President Trump put a target on their backs and his mob broke into the Capitol to hunt them down. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.